very good evening to all of you uh, welcome to the weekly online series of lectures called uh, know your ip and uh, this is uh, the 19th lecture in the series so we are already into our fifth month and uh, we have been uh, fortunate to have wonderful resource persons so far and the latest being uh, Sri Ashok Ram Kumar, uh, senior advocate with a uh, lot of exposure to cyber laws and uh, intellectual property rights. Let me extend advanced greetings to all of you, including uh, Sri Ashok Ram Kumar sir, on the occasion of the World Intellectual Property Day, falling on 26th April. And since 1970, you know when the World Intellectual Property Organization was brought into existence under the WIPO convention. This day is celebrated as the World Intellectual Property Day all over the world. We are very happy to have uh, a lecture on the theme of this year's World Intellectual Property Day by Sri Ashok Ram Kumar sir. And uh, before I proceed further, it is my bounden duty to uh, welcome the resource person Sri Ashok Ram Kumar sir, uh, to the portals of the DPIIT IPR chair, Usmani University, sponsored by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Government of India. A brief introduction of Sri Ashok Ram Kumar is, sir is a proud alumni of Usmani University and an attorney with a master's degree in intellectual property rights. He is one of the pioneers in the area of intellectual property rights having founded Verdict IP almost 30 years back. It is uh, a 30 year old boutique IP law firm and he has more than three decades of experience in handling various IPR issues in uh, the areas of litigation, enforcement, valuation or prosecution and his speciality being patent litigation, trademark litigation, copyright litigation and the litigation relating to designs at almost all the stages right from the original court that is trial stage to appellate stage and even at the supreme court sri ashok ram kumar has a lot of experience in handling issues relating to intellectual property law right right from the filing of ip applications prosecution of ip applications and enforcement through litigation and valuation of ip and anti-counterfeiting etc and uh, sir also handled filing and prosecuting of applications in other countries and international organizations like united states of america african regional intellectual property office oapi european union and southeast asia additionally he also you know in fact uh, has lot of uh, academic interest in the area of intellectual property and he addressed a number of issues relating to IP audit and valuation for many companies for their acquisitions, mergers and annual assessments. And uh, he has led corporate training sessions, delivered number of lectures on specific IPRs. Just now I mentioned about the wonderful lecture he delivered in uh, October 2021 in, on the same platform. Then uh, on many specific issues of IPR with special focus on information technology for various sectors. And in fact, his uh, beneficiaries include business houses, the National Institute of Fashion Technology, NIFT, Confederation of Indian Industry, then uh, AP Trade Development uh, uh, Corporation, Jawaharlal Nehru University, JNTU, National Institute of Technology, and many other governmental and non-governmental organizations. And uh, the speciality of Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar is that he is equally adept at handling the issues relating to IT law, that is information technology law, the corporate IT security issues and cyberspace property rights. And uh, he handled cases relating to cyber crimes, forensics, digital footprinting and analysis. I must say that he has always been one step ahead of many of his contemporaries in handling these matters and he is also a certified uh, mediator from uh, BMAC Bangalore with a special focus on IPR mediation 
and he is also a member of AIPPI, then International Trademark Association and Intellectual Property Law Practitioners Association of India. So I don't want to stand between you and uh, uh, Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar. And uh, today he will be speaking on the theme of this year's World Intellectual Property Day, that is intellectual property and youth innovating for a better future. Over to you, sir. Welcome to DPIIT IPR Chair, Usmani University. Thank you, sir, for that uh, introduction. And for all the listeners, I want to say GB Reddy, sir, is also my guru. And I did my LLM in Usmani University in 2013. He used to teach us patent law. And that was the time I also little bit, you know, brushed up a little bit more on the patent law, certain, you know, international conventions and things like that. Uh, hearing to him, you know, in a lecture is like uh, just browsing through internet, you know, it will be like a story. Once he starts, you know, all you need to do is listen. Everything you will be able to register. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Every year on the IP day, there is one theme that is, you know, crystallized by the WIPO and the other organizations. And then the world is asked to debate on it. Now, when I say debate, not just debating for the purpose of understanding that subject matter or looking into the subject matter as part of academics or even, you know, looking into the subject matter, that particular subject matter for the purpose of discussion and all that. Now, every time one such theme is given, there is a lot of discussion that happens. But this year, I thought the theme was very apt, very purposeful, and a most needed topic, that is intellectual property rights and youth and innovation. Innovation had always been associated, invention has always been associated with intellectuals, right? Your bulb, Thomas Alva Edison, Penicillin by someone else, right? They, they were always considered as great intellectuals, people who had access to a lot of study material, people who had the capability of studying, analyzing and you know putting forth but it is for the first time that the ip world or the ip fraternity thought of youth to be innovators and why not see at my age if someone gives me a huge bundle of papers and says sir this is a trademark infringement matter or this is a you know patent infringement matter we want you to appear and argue. Yes, I'll be very happy to argue. But if someone asks me to do an invention or an innovation, you know, at my age, my thought process will be completely different. Right? But for the youth, they, you know, brain at that point of time is very, very fertile. And the thought processes go beyond mere you know, the, 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 the mere present situation. Now, today, if someone is thinking, you know, innovation about uh, what is called as uh, digital currency and how do you connect it with, you know, uh, digital accounting, how do you connect it with land dealing, how do you connect it with income tax, right? Now, these are the thought processes that are evolving nowadays now anyway this topic when it was given it was quite tough for me to you know make the ppt so i asked one of my interns from uh, symbiosis to do one uh, uh, student aishwarya did this ppt for me now innovation is a practical application of idea right ideas are not you cannot get an ipr for idea right it has to be on a paper it has to be, it has to take a form to get an IP. Now, 
the application of ideas that result in different new types of new offerings like products services processes business models intending to improve or disrupt existing applications or creating new solutions is called as innovations and when i say business models business models are not patentable though business models as a uh, what is called as a description or as a methodology can be copyrighted but innovation is a practical application where you alter right create a new solution now innovation also would take into account jugad right jugad is what doing inventing a particular thing with whatever resources available with you there was this very interesting book you know which i was reading jugad i completed that book where there was a very good example of a gujarati gentleman manufacturing a fridge out of mud right no power it will work throughout the year maybe it will not give you ice but definitely it will what is called as safeguard the food a food that could get spoiled in about 3 days its life could be extended for another 6 days or 7 days so a poor man's fridge that was invented then he went ahead he started manufacturing mud pans mud utensils right so now it is a full fledged industry there and you know people have started believing that this is something that can work it can replace the traditional you know traditional fridges or traditional pans or traditional cooking utensils right it could replace them so now this is innovation inventions are bedrock of innovations an invention is a new solution to a technical problem and can be protected through an intellectual property right so when you say invention the fundamental principle that you need to look into invention is that there is no prior art in the same technology or process available in the world that is invention is something different from a discovery someone in the west said there are nine planets but what the west did not understand is you had a entire set of temples in south india which were dedicated to each planet right built in the same latitude and longitude that you find in a you know regular temple when you go you go around navagraha right that is seen there so and someone said you know in the west that earth is flat otherwise if it is round we will fall off, fall off into the space but then you know again uh, one of the avatars kurma avatara where the boar is seen to have the earth on its snout right between the two it is found in rigveda rigveda is some few thousands of years ago so how did they know that the earth was round so you see these these are all called as discoveries inventions are something completely new right if i say I'm, i have invented a carburetor for a vehicle that can draw air from the atmosphere split the air into oxygen hydrogen or any other thing combust hydrogen then oxygen is a by product if there is any moisture that will go as water which is a by product now that could be a invention then during the innovation process the legal protection of knowledge that will finally materialize in a product or a process is crucial for this reason ip protection is a strategic tool in the innovation process of company without ip protection there is you cannot uh, what is called as safeguard your invention for any company there are four pillars of uh let me put it this way every company has got four pillars of survival one innovation and invention two filing and prosecution three enforcement and fourth is valuation each pillar is important in its own way each pillar contributes to safeguarding the ip each pillar protects the ip and each pillar will see that the company makes 
some monetary benefit out of the IP. See, if, if a patent is filed, just not filing a patent, getting the patent and keeping quiet. You need to monetize it. Monetize it is take it to the industry. Tell the industry, look, this is my invention. This is how it can be used. And the, invest, uh, and the industry invests in it or buys your invention. That is, these are the four important pillars of, you know, IPR. Then, innovation and IPR, patents protect the interests of inventors whose technologies are truly ground-breaking and commercially successful, successful by ensuring that an inventor can control the commercial use of their invention. An individual or a company that holds a patent has a right to prevent others from making, selling, retailing, advertising, I missed the word there, advertising or importing the technology. Now, any IP for the purpose of contravention means either you are copying the IP granted to someone, right? Either under the statute, which is a statutory law or under the common law, if you are doing this, then what happens next is there is a enforcement that is brought about where the infringer is stopped, right? In a patent, if you have a product, if there, may, if there is, a, if there is a, a patent for a product, you can't make the product, you can't sell the product, you can't advertise the product, right? Or you can't import the product. These are the fundamental four or five uh, issues that are there. But still, there are provisions under the Patent Act which entitle you to manufacture a patented product, but under a provision called as a BOLAR provision, which is under 107 of the Patent Act. So under 107 of the Patent Act, you can always go ahead and manufacture the patented product, but whatever is being manufactured has to be used in a R&D. So that is how, you know, the pharma companies worldwide, you know, all the multinationals, when they jump on the Indian pharmaceutical uh, companies and they get a, you know, what is called as an injunction, uh, restraining the Indian companies from manufacturing and all that. You know, we generally, uh, when, when I appear for the local Indian companies, I generally take it on the ground of one zero seven. Then next is copyright. Now, you should all understand copyright protects the format. It does not protect the idea. How the format is, is what is protected by copyright. See, many people have written Ramayana, right? All of them had a copyright for it. It is just not Valmiki had a copyright for it. Everyone has a copyright for it. So it is the idea. It is the format, not the idea. So it's, I can draft an e-commerce step with 10 steps. Someone else can draft an e-commerce step with seven steps. Both of us are entitled for a copyright. Now, copyright is for a music, it's for a movie, it's cinematographic film, it's for photographs, artwork, it is for, uh, you know, what is called as uh, literary work, it is for, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is called as the creative works which are there. Under copyrights, you have moral rights, you have so many other rights that are involved. Now, the term creative work, right? is defined very broadly for copyright purpose. So what is creative work is just not left to the imagination of the person who defines it or the person who identifies it, but it goes beyond what is shown in the picture, right? Creative work is a functional text such as user guides, product packaging, as well as works of art. Now, all these are creative works. How I put a brand in the uh, market, with a beautiful packing or with a beautiful slogan. They are all creative works. Now, apart from copyrights, they also have trademarks. Now, that is uh, different. I'll, when I come to that, I'll tell you. Next is a design. Now, a design protects the aesthetic features of a product. Only aesthetic features. That is the shape, how the product looks, right? So, I have a cell phone. I can get a design for the cell phone, you know, for the round corners and the, the length of the phone, the breadth of the phone. And tomorrow I can simply remove the cover, put stripes behind the, uh, you know, uh, phone, and again go for a design right. So, design right is non-functionality. 
anything that is non functional but has got a aesthetic value is design anything that is functional is a patent that is why you know there is a relationship between both the words saying they say design patents and patents right then next trademarks you know trademark is a sign you know which indicates the uh, product its origin from which house it is coming so i walk into a uh, let us take into a you know um, uh, a retail shop and then i see blue bottles on the top i know it is parachute coconut oil right which has got a particular is manufactured by marico industries it's got a particular quality the content is there right it's got a patented safety cap on the top now it is the origin from where when i when i say i'm buying this product i know it is coming from a manufacturing house which is known for its quality then benefits of ipr you know ipr benefits there are any number of benefits uh, you know in ipr but the most important is you can turn in your turn your ideas into money spinners right you can make money on ipr but making money on ipr is not that very easy out of at least 100 inventions you know the latest uh, you know there was a, a recent analysis done by uh, one of the uh, ipo offices in europe and they came to a very shocking conclusion that even in the west the amount of commercialization or monetization of ip is only 12 or 13 percent even that is very commendable but for what the number of applications that are being filed prosecuted and got the 12 percent or 13 percent is quite low so the the way you can use your intellectual property to create a business the way how you can use your intellectual property to make money out of your ip right how do you convert it into an asset that you can have for 20 years if it is a patent you can have for 10 years extendable by every 10 years if it is a trademark you can have for 10 years as a design extendable by another 5 years and if it is a copyright during your lifetime and after you are not there to your you know what is called as uh, uh, to your legal heirs for another period of 6 years so copyright is the longest protection that is given so benefits of ipr basically is how do you monetize it how do you market it whether you want to monetize it for the purpose of a single you know assignment by doing a single assignment selling it off or you want to monetize it on a monthly basis by means of royalty being paid right all those things then iprs enhance your business market value it gives you an edge in the market if you are a better if you are if you are a producer of a better mouse trap then your neighbor right your neighbor has produced a mouse trap which catches only one mice but you have a mouse trap which can catch five then you stand on a better footing on the business standards in a market so you have the advantage right so i, I always give this uh, example in patents where you know one person invented a, a kettle which had two snouts right so he has got a better advantage than the next shop chaiwala because this guy is able to dispense tea out of two snouts in you know making it double in the given time right if his if his neighbor uh, is uh, able to dispense 300 cups of tea in one hour our guy is able to do it in you know one hour 600 cups of tea so how you monetize how you position yourself in the market how you position yourself in a better in a very advantageous position as against the other is something that is very important and this is called as the business market value right next is it can help you ipr can help you stand out from the competition right you want to stand out of the competition you have a good brand you have a good design right then you can you know it is creating an image for yourself in the market right when someone recognizes that bottle or bottle of kind of you know product or the product itself then they say okay this is coming from this house so we can rely on it right and one advantage when you stand out is you also differentiate your product from the product or services within that market area and you can promote your product to a target audience target customers 
so that is standing out the comp standing out in the competition then ipr you know with ipr you can raise finances nowadays ipr is uh, mortgages in that what happened in the kingfisher case where the trademarks were mortgaged for a, the trademarks were valued and then they were mortgaged for the purpose of taking loan so see it's a new concept in the uh, law of mortgage as to how first of all you need to value it how do you value it if you value it so for how many years can the valuation continue if a competitor enters does your value come down right so many things have to be seen but the fact is you know for the first time in the country uh, um, you know kingfisher managed to see that their ip is mortgaged but then you know it was overvalued and then later when the company had completely collapsed they found that the ip was completely overvalued right then ipr can enhance opportunities related to export and business you have a better product that can be sold abroad you can make a lot of exports increase your business and then extend your product presence in other countries also now the important of ipr and youth now today you know everyone says today's youth is future of the nation if they are taken care then the nation is taken care well all that talk is fine but how many of us have really thought that innovation should be a subject matter in schools innovation should be a subject matter in colleges where the youth can be told look invent and innovate for your own existence invent and innovate for your own what is called as economic you know um, uh, economic progress right invent and innovate to create a, a intellectual capitalism for the country invent and innovate for your own small societies development now not many people have spoken about this you know not many schools also think of it but the importance of ipr and the youth is they can do attitude right is very important because that can do attitude has got a very important uh, you know ingredient called as creativity and this creativity comes to the youth in you know it's a very wide bandwidth creativity is a very wide bandwidth it's just question of going on thinking thinking you know uh, thinking about how a thing can be done thinking about how a service can be done right now this creativity and the can do attitude has to be capitalized in order to see that the youth come out with innovations and inventions now there are there is a new wave of uh, you know innovations you know which uh, which is transforming ideas into reality in other in other words it advances their ambition and ideas now i have seen exhibitions where i have been asked to come and judge where very young children right very young children the age of say 15 to 22 or 21 they come out with beautiful inventions now there is one of this invention by a girl who was actually a victim of molestation and then that girl invented a watch right that watch was a regular watch anyone looking at the watch will think it's a regular watch but the watch had a particular uh, wifi system and a connection to all the relatives and her friends in and around the area where she used to go so if she was in trouble all she had to do was press a small button in the watch and then you know everyone would get a alert so this was a very simple invention you know for a girl and you know you see invention you know mother of inventions right so she faced problem and she at that point of time realized look i could not message to someone who could come to my rescue or something like that so she came out with this idea i'm going to take certain examples in this uh, ppt with regard to some brilliant innovators youth innovators in this country Uh, who have actually, you know, given a very, uh, you who have actually, uh, you know, told the world that youth invention cannot be disregarded, right? You just can't disregard youth invention because it has been invented by a school uh, child or a college-going uh, child, saying no, 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 they, 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 their understanding 
of this thing is not mature. It is only people who are very mature can do invention, right? I'll show you certain very important inventions done by children, very purposeful, making things very easy. You know, let it be agriculture, let it be, uh, you know, any other industry. They have made certain inventions. I'll go through that. But most important is listen to the youth and analyze their needs in order to aid them. Not many people, you know, give a hearing uh, to the youth. Now, let me give you an example. How many engineering colleges have an invention hub? How many engineering colleges have an invention hub? Where if a student invents something, right, he takes it to that hub where it is chaired by two or three professors, heads of department and all. They go through his invention and they, they can, uh, you know, give him an idea whether he can go for a patent or whether the college is supporting it for a patent or if the patent is done and then he obtains a patent, how do you commercialize it? To what extent can the college commercialize it? Right? So we should learn to listen to the youth. You should learn to learn. You should learn actually to learn how to analyze their needs. Right? And then how to aid them. Aid them financially. Aid them by giving place to work. Aid them by giving all the material that is needed. And most importantly, aid them by reducing statutory fees for filing the IP. In fact, in the slide I'll be in the last talking of why should not the youth be given application filing free of cost, right? A patent application. He doesn't need to pay the, uh, you know, the filing fee, right? If it, and once he gets a patent, wave of one or two years of maintenance fee, right? Then let the government itself take up to what is called a monetize his patent, right? Hand holding is basically what is called as hand holding a person to, you know, walk the road of success. That is very important. Then, now, this is the first, uh, you know, uh, slide with regard to a person. Uh, you know, Hannah, who had invented a particular, and in, in, in a very young inventor from Florida and invented a particular gadget that could capture ocean waves and convert them into electricity. Right? Ocean wave, you know, ocean is eternal power. So, how do you capture the ocean wave to what is called as convert it into electricity? So, this girl had a pen friend in sub-Saharan Africa, where, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, our resources are very, very, uh, you know, very, very depleted. So there, you know, when she was talking to her, they thought about this, and then they started the project called as Beacon, that is bringing electricity access to countries through ocean energy, right? Now, patent has been granted to this girl, and they have already started this project in a major way in Norway and in South Africa. Somewhere near South Africa, they have already started this project. And, uh, you know, um, along with the low-cost energy, she has also developed a system which could purify water, you know, uh, for the purpose of uh, drinking. So power and water both uh, problems attempted to be solved by this young innovator. Now, coming to our own country, smart came by this girl called as Ria Karmachi, a 14 year old. She noticed her friend's visual impaired grandmother, you know, bump into tables and all that. So she developed this to help blind people navigate better with advanced technology capabilities. Now, look at, look at, See, what you should appreciate here is they use technology on very simple things, right? A cane that could lead a blind person, navigate, you know, in the house. Then we, the cane's proprietary computer vision technology has a built-in camera, right, to detect objects in the real time. And then, you know, the cane is capable of narrating the object nearby, detecting it, and then providing 
you know, uh, uh, you know, directions and with a vibration, give a feedback to the person who's holding the cape. So it was all in all part of the body, part of the, you know, the part of the blind person who could always rely on the cane, which had so many features. So, you know, now look at this girl, looking at her friend's grandmother, she got an idea. Now ideas come at random, right? You can sit, think, get an idea. Sometimes an event will give you an idea, right? Sometimes an incident will give you an idea. So for this girl, the event was seeing the friend's grandmother. Now, the other person is one Subhash Chandra Bose from Pudukottai. And in, you know, Pudukottai is in Tamil Nadu. So this boy invented a solar powered, uh, you know, seed drill aid, which could plant seeds of different sizes at variable depths between, you know, and give a very, very, what is called as uh, equal distance between the planted seeds. Now this is solar powered. I can understand a mechanical seed planter which could do on its own. But someone to think of solar power, generating energy, putting it in the battery, allowing the battery to be accessed by the you know, seed planter, and then how it is done. This is something which is an innovation. It's by the Indian youth. Right? The first two slides were from people outside India. Now all these next slides which I am showing is from the Indian youth. After all, you know, children. Right now, you see the next one is two young girls, Elikia and Pavitra. Both of them, are, you know, from Erod. Right, Erod is in Salem district. A loom for physically challenged. The loom was elim the loom has eliminated the conventional pedal system and has replaced it with a motor and a gearbox attached to a pulley mechanism in order to aid who are physically challenged. Now, the way how these girls looked at a loom that could be operated by a physically challenged person is in itself an innovative step, is a very, very, uh, you know, very innovative thought process. You know, for you to look at the loom, look at the person who's, uh, you know, handicapped and how does he do it? Yes, this is the way how they were able to some of these looms you will find in uh, Kanchi, in, in uh, Tamil Nadu, where, you know, it is operated by power, motor and a pulley. Uh, you know, the person need not use his uh, legs. Now, the next one was a door, a drawbridge for trains, which will act as a ramp to make it easier for passengers to carry their luggage inside the train, as well as aid the disabled. Now, this was done by Ram Akash and Nimisha uh, Kat, uh, Katyayan from Jharkhand, right? Simple idea, getting out of the train, how difficult it is for old age passengers or for people carrying heavy luggage. So, how can they take out the luggage without any problem and just, you know, go over the ramp? In fact, you know, I don't know if you, many of you would have uh, traveled in the flights. So, when the uh, you know, the passengers are taken to the aircraft by the bus, you know, which comes. You can actually feel the bus slightly going down at the door side, right? And then passengers getting it. Then after the passengers get up, the, the, the bus will again rise to a particular thing and then it, it takes the passengers to the aircraft. So now, a very simple idea as a matter of convenience for people, and that can be used in multiple, you know, uh, at multiple locations. In the same train, you will have 50 coaches. So 50 coaches will have 200 doors, each coach having four doors. So how does this work? Right? That is one. Now, these are some of the inventions by the Indian youth that have been, uh, you know, uh, the, that uh, I was able to lay my hands on. Then. Now, Indian government and the youth innovators. Now, you know, the minister, uh, union minister, Mr. Jitendra Singh, you know, has put in a lot of efforts and then he has brought in a number of steps to promote scientific temper among the 
masses, especially the youth, the youngsters, the college goers, and the school uh, school children. Right? It's a pan India scheme that envisages a star college in every district of the country, supported by Department of Biotechnology. Imagine a college that has got 400 engineering students. Right? Now, all the engineering students have to do a project. Each one of them will be doing a project. Now, when the project is done, let us take the first year I've got 400 students. There are 200 projects and all of them completed by the end of the fourth year, right, to be given. Now, imagine when 400 patent applications are filed on behalf of the college, right, for all the 400 projects. Maybe, you know, almost 90% will be thrown out and another 5% may not make it. 5% could be granted. Out of the 5%, only 2% will be monetized. But then still, you know, it is a better than the cap for the college. Now, almost all, most of the Ivy League universities in US, they are not funded by the state. They are only funded by the innovators and the inventors who have done invention for the uh, you know, for the college and then the college is earning through the royalty, right? That is something that is to be seen. So when schools and colleges get into this mode and then, you know, when they start inventing and then when they get to a, uh, you know, get to a milestone where their inventions can be uh, what is called as uh, monetized then it is a feather in the cap for the college and the school. Now, how do they do this? They organize workshops, right? They have monthly meetings. Then they handhold college participants to, you know, um, uh, show them how to go about it. There are declarations. There, there are the, the college students who actually, you know, uh, 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 do these inventions. They can always go to their professors and seek, in fact, Quite recently, I went to one college where the students had invented a small gadget that was there for the trolley that you use in a supermarket. Now, what you do when you take the trolley in the supermarket, you put all the uh, you know things that you want to buy. But in this trolley, as you put the product, the billing starts in the trolley itself. So by the time he goes to the billing section, his bill is ready on the trolley. All that the person has to do is cross check it uh, once again and then issue the, you know, take the money and then issue the product. Now, this was a very simple invention, right, by the students. Then the next one is addressing students and the college staff. Now, if the college staff and the professors and lecturers are not, you know, they do not have a scientific prowess, right? They will not be able to help the students. Any amount of, you know, help from outside will not be very, very uh, conducive. But if the help comes from the local teachers, the colleges, you know, the students will be in a better position to do it. Now, there have been a great support in the last five years, almost 1.5 lakh students, you know, have been comprehensively supported, uh, you know, and provided uh, and uh, support and the colleges have been provided with, uh, you know, uh, schemes for the star colleges and it has been successful and this holistic support is expected to create an environment for the student to get motivated and pursue science education. Then. How innovators help the, how innovations help the youth. Now, motivating the youth is in order to enhance the entrepreneurial ecosystem and empower the youth to create a sustainable job market given the youth make up the majority of the population. Now, this is how innovations help you. Creating a job market, creating jobs, right? And not just, you know, and which is, which is an actually, you know, what is called as an alternate to Traditional job hunting. Now, traditional job hunting, what happens once they come out of the college or oh, they will think, all right, next I need to go for a job. So I start, you know, getting to companies, asking them what is what, 
how do i go about it so this traditional job hunting is something that is avoided by these uh, uh, students when the innovation uh, you know starts helping them and you know the entrepreneurial ecosystem is built by the um, government then the next one is the education institutes must impart, impart skill sets to the students that is very important if education institutes do not impart skill sets now imparting skill sets can be part of a project sometimes you know engineering projects where you know skill sets are imparted as a project for the uh, you know uh, thing that is being done by the student but then if you have to generate the business like skills in the students right regardless of the field of study then the the imparting of uh, you know um, um, education institutes need to impart better skill sets to students why not innovation as a subject in the school right the eu commissioner for education culture and youth and sports said that education can be a decisive force an engine in socialization of young scientists now i had one case where one student in a very well known institute hacked into the college into the school server changed this mark sheet completely and then you know he came out of it anyway finally did they caught him but then instead of punishing him the principal said all right you are able to get into my server now you create a firewall for my server where this thing will not happen again in future right instead of finding out the 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 uh, finding out the accused aspect of the person the principal had a very wide view he said look why don't you build a firewall for me for my school see this is the sort of you know uh, encouragement that children should be given now high school education you know instruct students as to how to tackle problems in society all that is fine but it should also equip students to the knowledge of skill sets and how they can apply this to overcome any obstacles that is important then ipr has various facets to it ipr as a fundamental and a basic subject don't talk of patents don't talk of claims don't talk of uh, you know how what are diagrams and all but at least tell the children look this is invention this is innovation when you invent something this is what you are capable of getting when you get this this is what is the monetization aspect of it right certain basics can always be made a part of the curriculum for the children in schools then the children today are most adept with technology let me be very clear on it especially the cell phone technology they are extremely adept they know you know even kids i've seen kids of the age of 3 years 4 years they have excellent you know fingers uh, finger speed on the uh, cell phones but you should be able to tap this uh, what is called as this uh, ability to learn you know ekalavya education you see someone without joining him you learn how to do it right you should have the ability to channelize this learning skills to better things now there is one uh, you know patent which i filed recently for a school girl who developed a small program that could be installed in a cell phone where the cell phone automatically switches off after a particular time then when a call comes it will send automatically an sms to the caller saying look your call has been received we have noted that you have called us we will call you back right this girl was uh, studying in a local school here and she was hardly in her mind when the father came and then he said i want to file a patent for it i was quite surprised but then you know the way how we looked at it at least whether she gets it or not at least encourage it encourage it in such a way so that you know the that girl will be able to tell others 
you know how how is encouragement how is innovation done if i have invented a better thing i have monetized it i have made money and then i'm you know on a on a on a easy chair enjoying my life my neighbor will look at me he will say what is this this fellow is not working but then he is getting money so innovation was this. so he will also go ahead and do something like an innovation you know where it can be uh, you know where the person can you know make a monetary benefit then factors to consider while implementing innovation as a subject some of the factors i have stated social context constructive change to take place in education both internal and external stakeholders have to be aligned in their vision right which will constitute uh, progress then students any change in education directly concerns the students that is why their voice has to be counted the what their opinions are to be counted how they can help you know it, it is it is it, they should be a society it's it should be in the form of an agrarian society which where the students understand you know how to go about it you know how easy to do it they have all the facilities they have all the funding they have all the support from the government as well as the school then education is to carry out necessary operations of innovation and invention make it as part of the subject teach them what is innovation teach them what is invention tell them you know invention is not rocket science you know patents are there for a jump clip patents are there for a sticket note that is not rocket science right but then patents are given then most important is funding equity in education is very important if you don't have funds any amount of work you do gets compromised and it is stolen basically right funding supports what funding supports the entire infrastructure of invention and innovation funding funding supports the uh, the way how things are filed funding supports protection legal processes right uh, filing and prosecution so funding is a very important part of uh, you know this now steps taken by the government skill india mission is one and make in india right so our honorable prime minister was come out with this so many uh, you know uh, um, schemes uh, you know has come out with the make in india and skill india mission about 3 years back when i was in the us and i was in uh, uh, florida you know i was just doing some shopping in one place and then i found one kolapuri chappal you know a small one for children below the age of 5 years and then i was just looking at it and suddenly when i turned it out it said you know make in india with that line and the you know this thing saying made in india it was made by a set of school children in rajasthan right and that is being sold so these sort of encouragement has to be done because let me be very clear if you are saying children are future you create their future don't destroy their future you create such a atmosphere for them that they learn what atmosphere has to be created for their own children in future again now you have Be beti bachao beti padhao you have digital india mission you have startup india these are all initiatives by the government like startup india is a flagship initiative now the government also has to come out with initiatives specifically for children right give them what they need tell the schools they will get certain uh, what is called as advantage make it part of the curriculum that you know if you make a in innovation and invention we will give you extra marks or you will have a better thing now very surprising thing which i got to know about 5 years back when i was in the international trademark association one of my chinese uh, uh, colleagues you know a lawyer colleague was telling me do you know mr ashok in china there is a policy that an accused while being in the jail does an invention and if that invention is patentable the rest of the punishment period is removed and then is sent back to the society right so those sort of things have to be brought in saying if you do an invention yes we will give you this mark if you do this sort of uh, this thing and try to this you know bring it into market we will share or next year your fees will be completely waived off you know some encouragement for children to enable them to get into the groove of innovation and invention of course the you know you cannot uh, uh, get away from innovation education 
without touching Japan. You know, it's one of the two education systems studied in reports where innovation took the form of increased enrichment, education, provision in several education levels or disciplines simultaneously. The greatest thing in Japan is this system pervades right from, you know, very low class till the highest uh, class, uh, let us say uh, this uh, second class to 12th or, you know, even beyond 12th, if you have a degree, you know, it, it pervades still there. So the reason why they do it is there is a consistent pressure on the student to do. And once when there is a consistent pressure on the student to do, he will anyway go and do it. And obviously, you know, the, the, the institute is behind the student and keeps track of what the student is doing. Right. So this consistency is something which Indians lack. And that has to be brought in into our ecosystem. Then, you know, Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology is taking a lot of measures to encourage active participation in society of various individuals, including younger, you know, young uh, students and uh, sometimes foreign uh, researchers also. Then, the second last slide, the subsidizing academic research is one, one part of encouragement. Then training research is another part of encouragement. Promoting international exchange, you know, it works very well because, you know, when young students go to some other country on an exchange program, they learn a lot, right? That's an encouragement for them. They'll go to the country, see how the country is prospering. What is the intellectual capitalism of this country? Why is it that we are not able to do it in our country? You know, those sort of ideas will seep into the children and then they'll be able to do a better job. And the lastly, I was also talking of innovation by youth being exempt from fee. Every act of levy of a financial burden on the child could be compromised, could be made as a nullity, right? Where, you know, at an young age, when the student starts entrepreneurship, this is one way of encouraging the student saying, we are waiving your fee. Tomorrow you file a trademark for your brand. We will waive that official fee. You know, the patent, we will waive the patent fee. In fact, I, I, I would even suggest a grant of a patent without examination to students, right? Grant a patent, don't examine it. Grant a patent, let the patent be for five years, six years, no problem, short term patents. You grant it to them and once it is granted, give them the backup to monetize it. So one or you have one or two live examples, the rest of them will start coming. Uh, thank you, Ashok Ramkumar, sir, uh, for the wonderful session and uh, for the motivational uh, illustrations that you have provided and uh, also given wonderful suggestions as to how we can inculcate innovative culture in our education system. Now it's over to uh, Mr. Srinivas Rao to propose a formal vote of thanks. Mr. Srinivas, please. Uh, thank you, Ashok Ramkumar, sir, for being here. On behalf of BPIT IPR Chair OU Hyderabad India, I would like to take the privilege to host this uh, vote of thanks this evening. So we have today witnessed another milestone uh, of this institution. Our participants' retention till this time enumerates about their liking of the topic and your shared wisdom in the form of your discourse. On the eve of the World IP Day, which is falling on 26th of April, 2022 and uh, tuning the theme IP and youth you have rightly explained the entire ecosystem within one hour and you talked about Jugaad, uh, Ramayan copyrights, idea, trademarks and many more. Most importantly if you look at IP protection without monetization it loses all of its blend and the hard work which has gone into it. You have rightly explained the same with nice illustrations and the things you talked about. So you have given apt examples of the ideas and innovations from youth, like Jugard of uh, mud-based refrigerator, GPS watch, solar cedar, looms for physically challenged people, uh, drawbridge door, and many more. Our government of India is also bringing up a lot of projects and schemes. 
to support these kind of instances and innovations and of course with the help of people like you who can help them in registering their eligible IPs. I am sure listeners of this lecture will be benefited and may opt to protect their own IP rights. You shared a good idea on promotions of IP culture, sir. Also, our participants were also very proactive. They also have shared some couple of ideas like incorporation of IP subjects in these schools and many more. Overall, thank you once again, sir, for this interesting session. And we look forward for more sessions on more interesting topics from you. And now for the participants, thank you all for attending the session and uh, posting some of the interesting questions, which also helps in enhancing knowledge for everyone by this kind of collaboration. Now, before leaving, please ensure that you have subscribed to our Telegram and YouTube channel to get regular updates on our lecture series. You can also view all our past lectures as well, which are related to Know Your IP uh, from DPIIT, IPR Chair, OU Hyderabad, India. With this note and hope to see you once again, sir. Now I would like to conclude the session with your kind permission. Thank you all. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Redigaru, for giving me that honor. Thank you so much.